What's happening guys? Uh, we're at the end of the last video. We're starting on the same day. But there are some things that I realized about this thing is that I don't have a flappy box for this thing. So the air regulator box on that side. So it, I will need a mega squirt for this thing, but hopefully I can just crank it and it'll like pop, 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 when the, the flappy box. So <clears throat> pretty sure I also cut that piece of the harness off. So they're still going back after that. So, um, yeah. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to get the rest of it all set up. I want to run the fuel lines. I want to try to clean up a little bit more of the wiring, do the wiring in the back back there, get a battery for it, put some fluid in the diff, the trans, the engine, put some coolant in this bad girl here, do the, uh, power steering line and just get it ready to crank so the last things that i'll need is going to be a mega square or and a brake line that goes from the front to the back uh, because it's got no back brakes right now because i took that one off of the reservoir over there so it's got a brake fluid in it either so that's probably a bad thing we should probably put some brake fluid in it but yeah guys let's go ahead and just jump into this and just uh i guess we're just gonna put the fluid in it right now for the trans and the diff so we're gonna start off by putting fluid in the differential i'm gonna do a little time lapse i don't know if you guys want to watch that or not but you can fast forward to a little probably about a minute probably about 30 seconds later so <laughs> there's a bug on me so let's get going on this Okay guys, so under here, turns out that the diff already had fluid in it, so it kind of spilled on the ground right there. That's why there's that little powder pile of kitty litter right there. Uh, I put transmission fluid in it and I put the sensor in, so that's all done. Uh, the transmission is probably way overfilled, but who cares? Uh, we won't grind any gears that way. Um, so let's go ahead and go back up top and uh, see what we can do about that wiring. And just try to figure out a couple other things, guys. Uh, this thing's not that far away from running, so let's just try to uh, keep chugging along here. Get the get the fuel lines on, put some coolant in it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. Okay, guys, so we've been hard at work out here. Um, I got the power steering all set up now. All the lines are on. Push this one back down a little bit right there. Power steering reservoir, power steering line to the cooler. The cooler's all bolted up down there now. That's all done. The cooler line that goes to the actual rack that is on there um now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the radiator hose back on which is right there that's the upper one right there and uh, we're going to keep working on uh, whoo what, what should we do now guys it's kind of the wiring oh i can put the fuel lines on let's go get some fuel lines from autozone and we'll put the fuel lines on and we'll get that all situated there okay guys so on the miata here we are going to install the fuel lines now uh, I pulled the harness off. I'll do that later on, but I, I want to get the fuel lines all set up. So we're going to do that part. I, like I said before, I got the power steering stuff all on. I just came back here and I redid the battery on it. So the battery's all set. I got a battery too. Um, so the battery tie down is on. The negative is on. The positive is on. Everything's all tight back here. Tight. The negative might be a little, the negative is a little loose, but that's okay. Uh, the battery is tight though. So we're gonna go ahead and see what else we can do with this thing. Uh, let's get this uh, fuel lines all set up in the front up there. So the fuel lines are on now, guys. Fuel lines, and I put the PCV system on. I got a PCV valve right here. I put a little clear hose. This will actually allow us to actually see how much blow-by is gonna happen when this thing's at high revs and we're just banging gears over here, guys. But yeah. Uh, coming out pretty good right now. I am going to wrap it up for today. It's getting kind of late and I want to get some food and then just relax for the rest of the day. But yeah, the there's only a few more things that really need to be done on this thing for it to actually run. And that is the wiring back here. Get these three wires all put back together there. Get a plug on the oil pan so that I could put oil in it. Uh, put some coolant in it and then it should be able to start uh, we got to see if that ecu is going to be the right one and if it is then we are golden i need to get the flappy box like i said but 
if that starts to be a problem, then I'm just gonna go ahead and order the Mega Squirt for it and just say, screw it. And then we're just gonna put in bigger injectors too. So that's gonna be about it for today, guys. Let's go ahead and go home. Now that we're back, it's the next day and we are working on the Miata again. So obviously because it's the same video, but the Miata, we're gonna do the wiring. We're going to switch over the knuckles and we're gonna put some oil in it and see if it cranks. It's kind of like what I'm seeing, thinking about today. Um, with the wiring, it should be able to crank. Let's hope so. And with that new battery, it should have some power. So let's go ahead and start with this wiring. It's gonna take me a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it off camera. Obviously what I said I'm gonna do is I'm going to snip off this whole piece of the harness right here, wire in this one, wire in these three wires right here, and just get it all set to go here, guys. If I have to later on, this clip here is a bad clip. It doesn't have the piece that connects it right there, but neither does my cam angle sensor. So that's kind of eh, whatever. Um, we're gonna probably put some RTV or something on this just to hold it down, or I'll just put a big zip tie all the way around the cam angle sensor just to hold it in place. But guys, let's go ahead and do this wiring and then I'll do a time lapse of doing the knuckles to just, or just one of them to show you guys how I do it and to just get it all set. On the front end up here too, I need to get two pieces for the inner tie rods because I took the nuts off them. So I think I have some inner tie rod nuts in the bed of the truck box thing back there so i should be able to pop those onto there and i should be able to adjust it and lock it into place again so let's go ahead and start with this wiring though so the wiring is all done now i taped it all up did the wiring it's supposed to be each of the wires is probably like a little bit longer than it should be now which is better so that it will have more space to move around and now we're going to plug it all back in tighten everything back up and we're going to put some oil in this thing and I guess try to crank it, see what it does. Um, like I said, the flappy box is not on here, so who knows if it's gonna work. The throttle potential sensor is barely on there, so that who knows if that's gonna work. But let's go ahead and uh, try to put this wiring back together, I guess, for right now. Okay, guys, so the wiring is all put back on the back over there. I think everything's pretty much ready to go. Um, the fuel pump, I should check that too. I just put oil in it, just dropped the cap on the ground, so Got to pick that up, but I realized that I don't have an oil filter on this thing. So I'm going to go to AutoZone and grab an oil filter really quick. And I'm going to see if I can find some other stuff there that I need. Um, hold on a second. Put that back on right there. I, I will probably get like five gallons of fresh gas for this thing because it's been sitting for like six months without being started or driven. So the gas in it is probably really bad. So I'm going to drain all the gas too and put new gas in it but let's go ahead and go to AutoZone, get a filter and get some gas and see what we can do so let's do that stuff the oil filter is on down there fuel pump is out i actually looked at this and it doesn't look like it's gonna stay on there very tight so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut this zip tie off i'm gonna put this hose clamp around this thing and then tighten that down the fuel line down here looks like it'll hold up for a while um I don't really know if this is the proper way to do it, but it's on there and it's working. So we got a 450 Walboro in there. It's all wired up and everything like that. Doesn't look like there's any gas in this thing, which is actually pretty good. Um, kind of looks like there's just a little bit down there on the bottom, maybe about a couple gallons of gas in there. I stuck my whole hand in there, so it's all gassy now. But I'm gonna drain all that out, suck all that out, and I'm gonna put the new gas in there. The tank is actually starting to rust since there's been no gas in there, but after a while, all that rust will just get through and we'll just try to clean up the tank. And what we'll, maybe what we'll do is we'll just run it a little bit without uh, having the fuel lines on and then just prime the fuel pump a couple times and then check the gas and just go through all that. There is a fuel filter on there, so the filter should be cleaning out a lot of the gas over there, but let's go ahead and do the fuel pump piece first. So guys, it's pretty easy to get all the fuel out. We have a fuel pump that's attached to a hose that has wiring to it and you just hook it up to your battery and then it just drains all the fuel out. So that's pretty simple there. So once this is all drained out, I'm gonna put the fuel pump back in. I'm gonna put some gas into it and I'm gonna just plumb everything back up and then try to give it a crank and see what it does. There's oil in it, it's an oil filter. There's no coolant in it, there's no power steering in it, but as long as I can get a spark, some pop pops of it trying to start and do what it needs to do we are on the right track to getting it to run so 
let's just keep moving along with what we got got going on here and hopefully we can see if this thing will start today so that'll be really exciting this moment everybody has been waiting for here oil is in it transmission fluid is in it differential fluid is in it there's a brand new battery in it i just changed out the fuel looked at the fuel pump that looks all good all the wiring up here in the front should be all set i redid the cam angle sensor i redid the coil packs i have a coolant sensor on the back there's a coolant sensor here in the front um the alternator is hooked up all the other ground should be on it so let's go ahead and try to give it a crank and see what it does my oil plug down there on the bottom has a clamp on it now so let's go ahead let's see if this ecu does anything and we will see in one second oh we got we got some lights we got some lights so let's see if it'll crank now okay push in the clutch even though there's no clutch oh man guys whoa look at that whoa that's a good sign right there um like i said there's no flappy box so i don't know if it'll actually stay running but let's go ahead and try it again oh guys we are in business here oh yes yes we need a flappy box for this thing we need a flappy box we need to get the stock knuckles back on put some coolant in it and should be able to drift this thing but guys this ecu is right so we are in business right there um i really wish this thing would stay idling longer but since there's no uh flappy box or any of that maybe the throttle position is off too so let's go ahead and keep working on this thing i kind of want to get it so that it'll actually idle a little bit today so let's just keep moving so the miata is run it does it it starts but it doesn't run very long and it revs really really high so i'm not going to keep trying to do it I was checking all the cylinders and it looks like something went wrong with it. So I'm going to do that in another video. We're going to pop the valve cover off, check some other stuff and just do a compression test on it and see what happened with it, guys. But it started. That was the main thing. So now we got to diagnose what happened and that'll be a whole nother video. So stay tuned for that video. But if you guys like the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, comment, share, do all the good stuff. And guys, we will see you guys in the next one.